Hello, I'm Atuba Judge. So, so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, now, every one of you watching or listening to me right now, listen, listen, hear me. This year is going to end well for you. Praise God. Say, how do I know? Because God loves you. You know, I told you before, this is not the time to look at the newspapers. This is not the time to look at the news. Those things are going to confuse you. See, because the world is confused right now. I'm telling you, the world is so confused. <laughs> so if you're watching them report, they are going to report from the place of their confusion. So what should I do? Listen to what God is saying right now. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, that's what you should be concerned about. What is the Lord saying? How do I know that? Ask him. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, he owes you to speak to you. I'm telling you. I said it, yes. He owes you. This is a privilege for God to speak to us. No. He owes you. And let me tell you something. You know, sometimes people go, I don't know if God is speaking to me. No, you, you see, if, if, he, if he is speaking to you, you know, think about it. When you speak to somebody, your plan is for the person to hear you, right? I understand what you're saying. You don't walk up to somebody and say, hey, you. And they say, yes, let's jab, and then you now walk away. The person didn't get what you said. <laughs> and they say, have you given the person? Yes, I've given the person the instruction. <laughs> the person didn't get anything from you. So, so you want to speak to someone. You will speak in such a way that the person will hear and understand in clear terms as possible as you can. So when you get to that place, I don't know if God has spoken to me and I didn't hear. He hasn't spoken to you yet. No, he hasn't. Because when God speaks to you, you will know. Say, how do I know? You will know. Will I hear an audible voice? You may hear an audible voice. I'm not going to lie to you. You may hear an audible voice. But it's not always that audible voice. See? Like I've told you before, even if you hear an audible voice, it's not from the ear. You hear the voice of God. You hear him in your heart. So if you hear him in your heart, then you don't need the voice to be audible per se. Because the audibility of that voice is not from the sound itself. It's from the reception of your heart. Now many times God speaks to us. I know what we say. We say we are thinking. Or something was telling me. You know, you, many people, you know, ah, do you know something told me? Do you know something was telling me? Now, many times you hear in the voice of God. He's not going to call my son, I'm speaking to you, you better hear me. I've told you these things before. It starts from Eli, if so, sorry, Samuel and Eli. God already started speaking to Samuel. You know, God says, Samuel, Samuel. Why didn't God just say, Samuel, listen to me? I am God. No. The thing about God is this. Until he gets your full attention, he's not going to really, really express himself to you. So that's when he came to Samuel. He said, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel ran to Eli. Sir, you called me. He said, no, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. Samuel, Samuel. Uh-uh. So surely you called me. He said, no, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. And then he told him, look, if you hear that voice again, this is how to respond. Now Samuel heard the voice again and he responded that way. And God began to talk to him. See? For Moses, God had to set the bush on fire. You know, that false fire. <laughs> Praise God. Because Moses saw what's going on here. Bush is burning. And I'm sure he began to think, who, who came here to light this bush? How did this fire start? I'm the only one in this environment. So who, who started this fire? Is there, what's going on here? Let me go and see. And then as he was turning around to see, he observed, that, uh, uh, by now those leaves should have been down. How come the leaves are still green? What kind of fire is this? And then he began to say, no, I need to go close to see this thing now. So he was approaching the fire. Now his whole attention was gotten. So God now called him out of the burning. He said, Moses, Moses. See? He got his attention. Now many of us, that's what God is looking out for. He's waiting to get your attention. You know, sometimes say, something was telling me, or something was telling me, have you paused to say, what is this something that is always talking to me? 
and then you respond. God seeks your response anytime he is talking. You don't, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. You know, sometimes you don't even know until maybe, maybe let me use your term now. Maybe something was telling you not to enter that vehicle or not to go to the place you wanted to go to. And then for some reason, you decided to obey. And then later you get a call, hey, where are you? you say, I'm at home. Oh, stay at home, stay at home. Say, why? Ah, if you see what happened on the road today. You, you look at the time and then you're like, whoa. I remember, so amazing. You, you remember, if you're in Nigeria, you remember that Independence Day bombing. That was 2010. Independence Day Bonnie at the Eagle Square. Now, I remember the day before that day. I had gone with someone. We just made up our mind and said, you know what, let's, let's attend this ceremony. It's been a long time, you know. You know, it's been a long time sat in, in, in that stadium. I remember my primary school days. You know, we, do, we did it all the time because I went to a military, military primary school. So we did it all the time. You know, you hear those drums, you see those match pass. They were just part of us, you know. <laughs> it's good. So, so I, I just thought of it. That, Man, it would be good to attend. Let me just, just watch the match pass and, and, and just, just, you know. So we, we were passing about around that area. And then I said to the person with me, I said, you know what, tomorrow, this is where we're going to park. I don't, I don't think they will allow people to park um, cl so close to the Eagle Square. So we're going to park here, you know. We just, this area is where we're going to park. See this building? Yeah, so in case we don't come together, this is where I'll park. So, okay. So the day came, I, I got up. And I just felt lazy to go out. And I was wondering, ah, I'm supposed to go. Oh, I told this, this, this guy, we're going to meet there. You know. So I just kept dragging and dragging. And, and at some point, like, you know, what's the point? I turned on the, the, the TV, and I was watching it on TV. I'm like, there's no point going anymore. Now, I, I wouldn't say I heard God say, don't go, at, as at that time. But I just felt paralyzed in my heart to, to get up, get set, and go for it. And then we were watching. Then I called the person. I was like, you know, where are you? He said, um, I'm, I'm trying to get ready. I said, I'm not coming anymore. So, oh, okay. So we left it. Guess what? Then we heard the news. There was a bomb blast. Whoa. Now, after, later that evening, you know, I drove out. And I got to pass around there. And while I was driving past where the bomb blast happened, because the other side, I was driving on the other side of the road, I saw the car. And then it hit me that that's where your car would have been. That's where you marked and said, this is where I will park my car. And I thought to myself, I said, Lord, now, now, I, I just realized that the Lord actually saved me from that. Whatever, I'll save the car from that. So, I just said, Lord, so it was you this morning that just tuned down my mind from coming to this thing. See, what did I just do? I acknowledged the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now someone will say, hey, it's God that saved me. Hey, you, know, you know, when they say it's God that saved me, not really, really acknowledging the Lord. You know, people talk about God, but then they don't acknowledge God. See? And they think, I give all glory to God, though. You are talking to someone and say, I give all glory to But you have never, between you and God, say, Father, I give you all the glory. You are just all. Awesome. You saved me. And then you think you're giving all glory. You're not giving glory to God. So I remember that day I said, Lord, you saved me this morning. Yes, you did. Thank you. What's that? Acknowledging him. Acknowledging him. And why did that? Because I have understanding that he saved me. He didn't need to speak clearly to me. 
But I, I, you know, that's how he works in us. Remember the Bible says, it is he, God at work in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So sometimes you just feel an urge to go or to call someone or to go to a certain place or to do certain things. You know, the, the urge is just so strong in you. And you know what, let me just go ahead and do it. And then you do it and bam, it turns into a blessing. Whoa, yeah, yeah, you my man, thank God I was smart enough. No, you were not smart enough. You were being urged by someone. You have been urged, hey, hey, go, go, yes, go, go. So when that happens, do you, do you pause to acknowledge him? Say, Lord, thank you. Oh, that was you urging me to get this thing done. Now when you begin, I'm starting from the point of you don't even think you hear him now. But you see these things happening in your life. When you begin to acknowledge the Lord in things like this, then he will begin to get comfortable speaking to you. You see, he will be speaking to you. And he can tell you anything. Now I'm telling you the truth. I call him the talkative because he talks a lot. He's, he's always talking. Now, it, it appears that's the only thing he does. He talks and talks and talks. And now, when I say talks and not like a para 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 you know what I'm talking about. You look at the left, he's talking to you about what you see on the left. You look at the right, he's talking to you about things you see on the right. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean he's telling you go and be a prophet and begin to prophesy. He can talk to you as a friend. He will tell you things. He will show you things to come. He will tell you about things to come. He will tell you what's in people's mind. Now, why is he doing that? To guide you. You are discussing business with someone and he'll tell you, this person is like this. This person is like that. So, he's not telling you to attack the person. He's warning you. And when he warns you like that, say, oh, okay. You apply wisdom. Oh, thank you. You know, sometimes people don't know how to control this thing. The Lord tells you, this person is a bad person. And then the next thing he starts saying, you, you're a bad person. And before you know what's happening, there's trouble. And the person can even sue you and win the case against you, except God delivers you. Because you're accusing the person. You don't have any evidence. Your evidence is God told me. He's not telling you to accuse the person most times. He's telling you to save yourself. He tells you, this person is not, is not an honest person. Oh. So, how are we going to do this business? So, oh, we're, we're doing it, we're doing it. Okay, fine. Nice idea. You're a very smart person. You know what? Let me, let me take time to pray over this thing and then I'll get back to you. Hey, but this thing is set, you know. In fact, I, 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 I had a three days fasting and prayer before I started. Oh, nice, nice. But you know what? Let, let me just pray. Give me like two days or give me one week to pray about it. And then you, you, you leave and I go, Lord, you really don't want me to do that. Okay, thank you, sir. I won't. And how's it? He just saved you. You don't need to, you don't need to do anything, you know, in confronting the person. You don't need to. And neither is it telling you so you can change the person. There are people that will never change. You need to understand that. So when God is guiding your life, you follow that guidance until he leads you to where he's leading you to. And then you see the result. Of course, because soon you see the person act out. And like, oh, Lord, is that what you're talking about? Thank you for saving me that day from his hands. I would have been in trouble with this guy right now. So sometimes when you see believers get into trouble, financial trouble, they deceive you out of your funds. And you're asking yourself the question, where was the Holy Spirit when this thing was going on? But if you know God very well, you know He's faithful. Ever faithful. So He must have instructed you. He must have shown you the signs. But you know, ah, Lord, this the money is too good. Let me just do it. Let me just, let me take the risk. You're talking to God. Who's urging you not to do something? I'll tell you, let me just take the risk. It's really a risk. And it's not going to be for good. Praise <laughs> God. Oh, we bless you, Father. Thank you for stirring our hearts and our minds in your truth. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Today I declare that good things are coming your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.